Hello, this is Sizwe Podcast. My name is Agnes, and today we are. I am here with my co-host Patricia. Good evening, Agnes. Good how evening. How are you? I'm doing good. Oh, uh, how are you, Destiny? I'm doing fine, and you? Good, yeah, good. Today good we have a guest. It's a guy today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we are, we are lucky. Yes, <laughs> and his name is Destiny. So welcome to the studio, Destiny. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. And Destiny. Uh, what brings you here to the coldest part of the world? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Especially what happened yesterday. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's been crazy. Yeah. Yes, up until this morning. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm here as a student. I'm currently doing my masters here at the University of Alberta. So awesome. That's why I'm in Edmonton. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And Destiny, you know, a lot of people want to come here. But for them to get to the opportunity to come and study is so difficult. Mm-hmm. So tell us about your process, your application process. How was it? Okay, I think the first thing I would like to say it's it's not a one day thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah, it's it's more of a process, like you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it started from when I was doing my undergrad. Uh, I knew that I was going to do. Uh, I was going to further my education. Mm-hmm. Right, so after when I was still in my undergraduate, so I did my best to get good grades, mm-hmm. awesome. the best that I could. Uh, mm-hmm. I graduated with a two one, that's a second class upper. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think that was one of the things that really helped me uh, moving on. So afterwards, I'm from Nigeria. I did my one year of national service, mm-hmm. and then I started applying to schools. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, the application process, ah, long story short, <laughs> took about eight to nine months. Wow, very uh, good. Yeah, very from, good. From when I started conceived, started researching programs of interest. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted to do something related with what I did in my undergrad as well. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at, oh, community engagement, social work, or sociology. Oh. Yeah, uh, because I did sociology and anthropology in my undergraduate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I was looking, I had lots of options here in Canada and also in the UK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I applied, started in 2022 actually applied, got some offers, but I couldn't make it because I was still doing my one year of national service. I really wanted to do that because I want to go into politics later in future. Oh, so they don't say yeah. you didn't serve your country. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so I did that. And then in 2023, I tried again. And uh, yeah, late 2022, around October, November, mm-hmm. I started the process, submitted my application to the University of Alberta. Mm-hmm. And then it took about five months after my application to hear back from the school. From them. Mm. Yeah. So I, I submitted around late October, early November. Uh, and then I got feedback in April. Mm-hmm. 2023. Awesome. 2023. Okay. Yeah. And to the glory of God, it came positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I got admitted into the University of Alberta. So from when I conceived it, like when I knew I was going to do a master's, to when I got admission, it's like two years. Two, two years. years. Planning, right. preparation. When I was in my third year, Mm-hmm. Started doing the best to get my good grades mm-hmm. and all mm-hmm. that. So, yeah. Uh, and it's been God all the way. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's right. very good. Guys, if you just join us, this is Sizwe Podcast. My name is Agnes. Today, we are here with Destiny Otuadisi. Otuadisi. Right. <laughs> very good. You know, when I heard his name, I thought Destiny. You know, Destiny. I was expecting somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. You no, get it's a girl's name. Girl's yeah. name, yeah. yeah. Then my boss said, Destiny is coming, Destiny is coming. Then, then when he came, he was wearing this Nigerian Agbada with a, with a, with a, with a king's hat. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. So today, as a follow-up to most of the conversations that we've had with Yvonne on immigration, we are so privileged to have Destiny, who is an international student, to tell us. I think one of the things that Patricia, Yvonne always say is, if you want to come, start early. Yes. And look yes. at what Destiny is saying. He, he came here September, but he started October, November, the previous year mm-hmm. to, to research, to apply. And sometimes for me, I don't think I, I have your heart to apply and wait for five months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So you said after you get the, apply, uh, the admission, take us through that journey. After you receive that you have been admitted to University of Alberta. Yes. What, what else do you have to do personally at your end? Okay, thank you so much uh, for that question. I think I did skip a lot of the story. Uh, mm, t- just to Tell us more. No, <laughs> I, I, think, I think for us as immigrants, 
that is the question we always get. You don't know how many calls I get a day for people asking me, how do I get to Canada? How do I attend school? And for me, I refer them. But to have you as, as somebody that can speak to a lot of people who are watching us, I think it's a, don't cut the, the story short. Okay, thank you. So <laughs> I'm just going to start um, from how the process began. Very good. Yeah, so after I got that, it starts with gathering your credentials, mm -hmm. your, your certificates, everything. So after I gathered that, I started applying. One thing I would say, because I'll be dropping a few lessons along the way. Very good. Mm -hmm. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. Because I'm here today at the University of Abata, but this is not the only school that I applied You apply to. to, yes. Yeah, I applied to three schools here in Canada. University of Guelph in Ontario, mm -hmm. University of Prince Edward Island, because the application fee was cheap, and I was paying in Naira. So uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I, I think we have not even... So all of these schools, you have to pay different, Application different. Fees. be prepared yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think I paid about 150 uh, for University of Guelph. Mm -hmm. I paid 135 for University of Alberta. Mm -hmm. And then I saw University of Prince Edward Island and I was like, $50, this is the cheapest. This is the cheapest, let me go like. for it. <laughs> <laughs> and then to my surprise, I was ghosted by those schools. They never got back to me. Oh. I had all my credentials. I knew I was qualified mm -hmm. for those programs. It was related to what I did in my undergrad. But I didn't get any response back. And oh. one thing oh. I want to say in this journey is you have to be patient. Patient. You can't stress that enough. You, you have can't to be, be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's a process. It's yes. not something that you just wake up one day and say, oh, I'm I want going to, to school. This. No. Uh, even with my undergrad, when I was applying, I had to write my WAEC. Those of us from West Africa. Yes. I have to write my JAM, write my um, entrance examinations. So it's a process. Yes. So it's the same thing when you want to come here, especially considering that the system is different. Mm -hmm. You have to be prepared for a lot. Yes. Because <laughs> right? awesome. you're going to get, oh, there's there's a lot. Because I have these conversations as well with others who are in our shoes, like st international students. Are. Yes. A lot of international students have to deal with rejections. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe I applied to one school. I didn't get the positive feedback. That doesn't mean you should give up. Awesome. Right, because it's a process. And when that the one that is for you comes, it will not pass you by. So, yeah, going through to how I, when I got my admission, mm -hmm. what I had to do. When I, the day that I got my admission, it came in, I think, April 1st. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I hope this is not April 4th. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me wait yeah i waited and the day finished and i was like wow and i have to break the news but i didn't break it immediately you know we africans we don't we, want to we talk don't, too you much. don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> so one thing i did i talked to yeah my sponsors and let them know that oh they were like good so i had to start gathering my documents because it was time to apply for my study permits mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the most important processes that is why i say it's a process because from when i got my admission to when i got my study permit was another five months mm -hmm. yes and i think uh, patricia we want to go through that right mm -hmm. yeah yes you know yes. you know he just said something you you spoke to your sponsors yeah okay Ooh. Your sponsors, a very okay, good. yeah. So, for me, uh, uh, I come from a very dynamic background, okay. So Tell yeah. us more. Yeah, so, <laughs> I, have, I have my uncle mm -hmm. who has always stood by me right from when I was a baby, who has took taken care of me financially. And when it comes to my education, when I told him I have plans, he doesn't blink, yeah, he doesn't blink. He was like, Go for it, awesome. if this is what you want to do, go I for want it. to see you do it. Oh, so yeah, when I told him I had gotten admission, he was very happy and he was like, Okay, what's next? I was like, I want to apply for my study permit. He was like, okay, go ahead. Okay. And I had that emotional support, financial support from okay. my family. Uh, from not just my immediate family, because we are Africans. So yes. we are yes. all we are all united. Yes, yeah. So but even with my extended family, I had that support. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I was I was ready. So uh I had to reach out to my supervisor because I'm doing a research program had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with my supervisor and she, she gave me the go-ahead to apply as well and ask and let me know that if I needed anything, mm -hmm. uh, like any letter of support, anything, I should just let her know. So uh, in terms of the documents that I used for my study permits, I think the most important was the proof of funds. Uh -huh. From because, the rich uncle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from the rich uncle. <laughs> yeah. That is so good because you know, you know when you talk about sponsor, what came into my mind is when people call, they ask, Oh, I've heard that Canada, this school, 
uh, have a full scholarship for people who are coming to study, and I don't have those information. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was what you were talking about. That okay. when you say you have a spon- uh, you yeah. have to talk to your sponsor. So, so actually, mm-hmm. uh, with most Canadian universities, how it works, they are fully funded scholarships. But for most universities, you have to already be a student mm-hmm. to gain yes. access to that very good. Yes. very good. Yes, very good. So yeah. you have to start the process, get admitted, because as at the time I have a scholarship. Uh, from the University of Alberta. But as at the time that I'm talking now, I didn't have that. You didn't have that mm-hmm. when you were preparing, when to, I was come. preparing okay. to come. You mm-hmm. see? But while I was in the system, I started receiving information because when you have your school, your official email from mm-hmm. the university, these informations come in, but you might not know if you are not within the system. Okay, oh, yeah. Right? Okay. Very good. Although okay. there are some other external scholarships like... Uh, Different ones. I know if I for the UK, there's this for UK, there's the Commonwealth scholarships mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But for Canada, you mostly have to be in the system awesome. to get that information. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. I Guys, if you just join us, we are we are speaking to an an international student. And if you need more information, put your, your questions underneath it. Maybe we can get another student who is doing a PhD or an undergrad. He Destiny is here to do his master's at University of Alberta. And I can't be happier to be putting those questions that you've been asking yourself if you want to come to Canada to study. And sometimes what you think are the process and are not. And when, you, you, when do you even have to start? Destiny have the answer. Yes. <laughs> so in terms of when you have to start, you have to be prepared because it's a journey, it's a process. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you start a year ahead, it's to your advantage because it gives you a lot of time to prepare, to gather your documents. And I hear that and even no, new requirements for those who are attending maybe colleges for the postgraduate diploma mm-hmm. or maybe other diploma programs. You need to get a letter of attestation oh. from the province. And these things take time. Yes. Uh, in terms of the proof of funds, I know there have also been some revisions around that. During my time, it was, I think, 10000 for a year. You have to show. They've gone up now. Is yeah, it now it's about twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Yeah. Okay, so can you speak more to that proof of fund? That is after you have paid your fees. So yes, after you've gotten the 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 admission. The for admission. Instance. Okay, so what do you yeah. pay when you you pay your registration fee, which is the one application fee, the application fee, mm-hmm. and then what else do you pay? Please give me all the pay, pay, pay before you do. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is very important. Yes. That is like the backbone of yes, the whole issue. Yeah. So yeah. Regi- application fee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when you get your admission, what else do you pay? Yeah. So even I'll start with the application fee, okay. for instance. Uh, it's not uniform. Like I said, I applied to three different schools and I had to pay mm-hmm. three different amounts. Okay. Yeah. So each school sets their application fee, for instance. International students. For international yeah. students. Mm-hmm. And you have to research that is why you have to start early there's mm. a lot of research involved go to these schools go to their websites gather all the information that you can and weigh them is this good for me is this a good match will i be able to afford this uh i think i had one of 50 dollars if i had found that earlier maybe that's the first one i would have applied to, applied to yes. <laughs> because it was cheap <laughs> it was cheaper yeah relatively so yeah uh in terms of the other fees mm-hmm. uh, i know with uh the immigration and how how tough it can be sometimes. Mm-hmm. They usually don't advise paying anything up front. Okay. Right? Before applying for your for your visa. visa. Okay. For your study permit. They usually okay. don't advise. But for me, my tuition was about 9,005 with the U of A. Mm-hmm. And it's relatively cheaper than 9,005 per semester. Per year. Per year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that yeah. Is okay. That's, yeah. That, that's good. Relatively mm-hmm. good. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. For, for that, for international students. I know okay. for uh, local, local or student, permanent residents, mm-hmm. it might be it's less. Even cheaper. Yeah. yeah. It's even cheaper. So uh, you have to get that. But for me, I paid an advance of $1,000. Mm-hmm. Right? I could have paid everything because, yeah. Uh, we the were rich ankle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but on the other hand, we were not advised to because it was still 50-50. If you will get there. If I will get there. And at the same time, I had three admissions from the UK. Oh, okay. And one from Canada. I applied to three schools in Canada as well. But I had to wait, okay, should I go to the UK? I have family in the UK. Mm-hmm. Should I come to Canada? I don't know anybody here. But then you in the, the process, code. I applied for a scholarship. Mm-hmm. I got wind of a scholarship through my supervisor oh. and we put together a proposal and applied for that scholarship. And while I was in the process of applying for my visa, I got a positive response. Oh, and that okay. was the final that, that decider. Was to, yeah, to, come to, to come to Canada. To Canada. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, so it's 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 a process really. It takes time. It takes a lot of research, patience. But in terms of the finances, mm-hmm. it will be kind of. Uh, not right to give a d- specific figure because every it course, yeah, every yeah. course every have their own program sets their own fees. Every university sets their own fees in terms of the application fees, the tuition, and all of that. But in terms of what do you need to pay mm-hmm. before applying for your visa, yeah, you don't have to pay anything. Okay, okay. But you don't need to show that you have paid your fees to apply for, to a, apply visa. for a visa. You okay, don't. you only show that you have been given the letter of admission. Exactly. Okay. And okay. that you have the money to pay. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Because you, previously they used to deny people, I've heard of cases in mm-hmm. the past, because I used to, I did a lot lots of research on that. That's great. Yeah, I heard of cases in the past where people were denied because they hadn't paid to the, fees, the, yeah. the fees. Yeah. Okay. But I think over time it was, it was revised. Okay. Uh, to say, you don't have to pay because at the end of the day, you have people uh, having to ask for refunds mm-hmm. because their visas were denied. Definitely, yeah. Things yeah. like that, which is really messy. Yes. Okay? And you have to go yeah. through. Most times they'll say, okay, uh, they'll remove a 25% Percent of it. Yeah, it, fee, and it's true. And it's true. Like I think that. three days ago, I was with a friend at Nate where they paid the fees and their visa have delayed. Oh. And then the, the, the course was revoked. And now oh. this year, so now the wow. money is still sitting there since September oh. because the, the, the visa actually came in November. Meanwhile, they paid the fee. So this money has been sitting there and they have to transfer the, the, that, that money to another program. And that program is offered once a year. Oh. So he can't do the winter admission. He, he, he couldn't do the spring ad- admission. So who, who puts their 5000 and over in somebody's account that is not yielding any anything mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. exactly so yeah. so that makes I'm, I'm i'm happy that you are talking that they have revised it yeah so they revised that although most people prefer to pay mm-hmm. like me for instance i i couldn't take the risk i couldn't test it <laughs> so, so you thought that if you something. don't pay okay okay yeah. very good I, I didn't pay the full amount okay i was expected to pay about three thousand eight hundred for the fourth semester oh okay i came in last four mm-hmm. i was supposed to pay about three thousand eight and i was like okay maybe if we pay at least twenty five percent Mm-hmm. It shows that it's seriously. Yes, yeah. Uh, so we paid one thousand. Oh, okay. Out of that, and had the rest in my account. But Patricia, but I I have heard that there's a, a one thousand non-refundable, or is yeah, and like you said, it may be different from school to school. From, from school to school is different. Yeah, it's different from school. Okay. Uh, I have yeah. a friend here mm-hmm. as well in the University of Alberta that mm-hmm. came in 2022, 2023 January, mm-hmm. and she said she didn't pay anything. Until she, she got here. Until she got here. Oh. So she just got her. I think the three major documents is your passport, mm-hmm. uh, your proof of funds in terms of bank statements, just showing, oh, I have the money for my tuition and living expenses. Mm-hmm. And for those coming with family, it usually comes with maybe some extra, extra yeah, money amount yeah. that you have to show to say, oh, I can have this amount for each of the kids or for my wife or my family that are coming in with me. As dependent, but she she didn't have to do that. She just had the money in her account to say, "Oh, uh, this is the money I'm paying uh, for my tuition, and this is how I'm going to pay it." Well explained in a statement of purpose, uh, which is another document that you might want to have handy. Your statement of purpose. How do you call it? It's it's a statement of purpose, statement of intent. Uh, it it comes with different names, but it's generally a document because for the Canadian visa process, there are no interviews. Unlike that of the US oh, okay. or other countries. So there are no interviews. So that is your chance to explain to the visa officer why you chose the program that you chose, mm-hmm. uh, why you came to Canada, or why you are, why aren't you doing that program in your country, for instance, mm-hmm. uh, and things like that, basically. So it's just a way to, it's not mandatory, but it's like an extra document. Yeah. That it's very advisable to have because I had one in mind as well. It's very advisable. So most people write an SOP detailing, oh, what is your purpose for coming to Canada? Oh, I'm coming in as a student. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the program that I'm go- coming to study. This is why I want to study this program. And this is how useful it will be to me as an individual. Mm-hmm. And these are the reasons because you have to prove to the visa officer that you are going to return to your country <laughs> after. Please and please don't tell the visa officer that you want to stay in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very important that mm-hmm. you actually demonstrate that you will be leaving at the end because for the study permit, we all know it's a temporary yes, um, yeah. permit for you to come, do your studies and come and use that knowledge uh, in the future to make a positive impact in your community. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And awesome. Destiny, did they ask you about accommodation? Did they talk uh, talk about accommodation? Where are you going to be staying? Who's going to be helping you? 
That is a great question because mm. I think when they talk of living expenses, mm. they usually factor in where will you be staying. If you have, for instance, twenty thousand dollars for a mm-hmm. year, uh, definitely that covers accommodation, okay. feeding, and other things like that without you having to work. Okay, 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 okay yeah. Right? But while after I got my visa and I was at the port of entry, mm-hmm. that did come up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They asked you uh, the address. The address. Where are you going? Mm-hmm. I'm like. Because my point of entry was in Toronto. Because okay. it was difficult getting a direct flight into Edmonton. Oh. So I had to fly to Toronto and then to Edmonton. Mm-hmm. So while I was in Toronto, that came up. You are going to the University of Alberta. What are you doing in Toronto? Mm-hmm. And I had to explain that uh, I booked another flight. I had to show the oh, itinerary. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. And also my address that I will be staying. Uh-huh. Oh. So oh. that is actually very important. For me, for instance, it was very, very difficult getting accommodation from Nigeria. I uh, mm. trying to look for accommodation while you were still in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anyone. In, oh, I didn't you, know anyone in Edmonton. You didn't know anyone here. I didn't know anyone Aww. here. I had to book an Airbnb for that purpose, so I know at least I know where I'm going. Oh. So I booked an Airbnb for a week, so okay. I had that address. Okay, like, yeah. This is where I'm going. And when I came in, I started looking for accommodation while I was here in person because I've heard lots of horror oh, stories. Oh, yeah, scams. There, 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 yeah, there are lots of people getting scams. Yes, people finding accommodation and it's not. The and word, then you like you, the get, you get there. <laughs> So all that's of that, good I, research. I wasn't willing yeah. to take chances on yeah. that. But it did cost me more mm-hmm. you know, in terms of mm-hmm. having to spend more for an Airbnb. But I think it was worth it. Mm-hmm. Because one thing that I was considering as a student, first timer in Canada, I didn't want to stay very far away from school. That's yes. yeah, that, that's yeah. so important. I wanted to look for a place where I could easily walk to school, even on the coldest days. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Patricia, you wanted to ask me about the cold. Like, like <laughs> was it your first time of traveling? Actually, yeah. It was my first time. And then you and come what? to Canada, to the I cold. I came to Canada. <laughs> yeah. And, and how you, did I you find the cold? Because this <laughs> this year it was cold. Now, when I just came in, I think I came in September, mm-hmm. mid-September. I was like, is this the cold that they're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah. I wasn't informed. <laughs> I wasn't informed, yes. so I was like, "Is this the code? It's not code. It's now. not code." I used now. to wear my shorts, and then I went to the <laughs> bank one day to set up my bank account, and I saw I met a Nigerian there, and we're just talking. And he was like, "You just came in. Why are you wearing shorts?" Yeah, I'm, I'm like, like, "It's I'm not, not cold." cold. <laughs> and he was like, "Don't worry, it's coming." <laughs> and I asked him, "Is this a threat?" <laughs> he said, "It's a threat. You will see." <laughs> And then oh. when the cold eventually came, mm. I heard we were lucky that mm. it, it, it's oh yeah, not, this year it wasn't bad as in yeah January. this yes. year this year mm-hmm. has been the the, the most Libra <laughs> winter I have yeah. ever experienced to tell you the truth. But that has been my biggest shock. Aww. I tell people like when I call home, I tell them that nothing can prepare you. I know oh, I very used to hear good. it was cold. Uh-huh. Like, it's not something we can fathom. No. Until yeah. you experience How it. do you explain to somebody, <laughs> in, especially in my, in my country, Ghana, where the coldest temperature is plus 19, to tell them how minus 25 feels exactly. like? Yes. Mm-hmm. I think where I'm from, if, when it gets very cold, we have plus 21, plus 20. That is when yes. it is very that cold. It's been raining for days and uh-huh. it's cold, everybody is covered up. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we think of cold, we usually think in terms of AC. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Where we have maybe... 16. 16, yes. That yeah. Is the oh, that's, yeah, now I'm, so I'm that cozy. That's what I was imagining when I was hearing cold. <laughs> but when I spoke to someone about it, I was like, this is what they call bitterly cold. Like, you can literally <laughs> feel it. <laughs> yeah, you can, it's like you can kiss the cold. <laughs> like, don't worry. Don't, don't buy any jackets when you're coming. Come here first. If not, those are your jackets. You will just keep them. It oh, won't work. this thing. Is, you, 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 you really make me feel like, like when, when I came here, I, I also came in, in spring, May, and then around September, my boss was like, Agnes, you need to buy a jacket, and I'll go and buy a jacket. Then he, <laughs> she will hold it and say, no, this one won't take you. I'm like, this, this is that this, this is jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said, don't worry. And one day it was minus 35, and I had to work that night, that oh. evening. Oh my God! The bus delayed. <laughs> the bus delayed. <laughs> I was I was wearing a very good jacket because mm-hmm. I bought it here, but I was still thinking my life decision. Like, did I really have to come to Canada? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the weather is, the weather is yeah. much better. Yeah. <laughs> like, why did I come here? <laughs> but oh. but definitely, it's it's something that I I hope to get used to. That but really I'm not used to it yet. No, no, <laughs> no I don't. I don't <laughs> like the cold. Yeah, yeah and now we are in easy. spring. 
you see our summers they are beautiful oh, yeah. you would never think of the winter when it's summer no. it's so beautiful <laughs> we have flowers everywhere and you're like what is winter what, what is winter yeah. Until, yeah. until you begin to see the trees the the, the leaves turning yellow you're like yeah, no yeah. no <laughs> <laughs> guys if you just join us this is Sizwe podcast my name is Agnes and Patricia and I are privileged today as a follow up to most of the questions that we get uh, when Yvonne comes here we have an international student and he has taken us through the process if you if you've never watched our shows subscribe to this channel we have lots more for us as an Im- immigrant one of the questions that we always get how do i come to canada and that destiny has been so so honest with us with some of the process that you need to go through and he says start early mm-hmm. Patricia. Mm-hmm. and destiny right now you moved from the ANP ANP mm-hmm. so where are you staying is it a student accommodation what is it yeah i think that was another thing that really shocked me <laughs> because where i'm from when you talk about living on campus versus living on off campus like mm-hmm. student accommodation versus mm-hmm. renting a house mm-hmm. it's usually cheaper to stay in school yes mm-hmm. like have a student accommodation yes yeah than yeah. renting outside but here it's not it's the opposite it's the opposite when you rent outside it's cheaper than when you have when you're in student accommodation really mm-hmm. yeah I, I think for most student accommodation people pay as high as a thousand seven hundred per month for student accommodation. Oh. Yeah. And I pay just a fraction of that outside. Okay. Renting the house. Renting the house. kind of apartment. Oh. Yeah, with privacy though. Still very private, like a flat. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, but I think that was really shocking for me because I was expecting, oh, when you're staying in school, it's cheaper because that's what I know. Yeah, mm-hmm. because for us, yeah. I think back home, we, we, we have ac- accommodation in the university yeah. and that is cheaper. And mm-hmm. it is when you want your privacy and a big space, that's when you go pay more outside campus. Exactly. The good thing is, I think back home, the university I went to, there are accommodations in the campus where you can pay less mm. and it's house we call it house one house two house three or exactly, something like yeah. that I, but here i think in in u of a the only one i know is the lister hall Lister Hall. yeah the lister hall and i thought that because when people ask me I'm like oh yeah u of a has an accommodation lister hall that would be cheaper mm. i didn't know that that it is more expensive no, living. No, it, it is. It's more expensive oh. because there's the university residence, there's um, SOB mm-hmm. uh, that also has... Yeah, you know, oh, SOB have... No, uh, no, not SOB. Um, I'm forgetting the name. Now, okay. But, yeah, there's that place. There's also accommodation. But people complain that it, the hub... Yeah, the hub, okay, the hub. hub. Yeah, the hub. Uh, the hub. Oh, the, the top one has re- re- residence. Yeah, there's residence. Okay, there. okay. I, I know, but it's temporary, so it's like on a monthly lease. Oh. Uh, yeah, so, but, I mean, it's it's more expensive. It's cheaper to rent outside, and that's what I found out. And mm-hmm. so I decided to stay outside campus, but still close enough to work. To, to work. School. Oh, that's okay. very good. Okay. Yeah. Even even in my in minus 45. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> 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 Not when I have options. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, when the weather is okay, mm-hmm. I can try. Okay, that's <laughs> but in happen. minus forty five, if it's just one minute and there's a bus going there, I'll you will take, take the bus. The bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. before we go, I think a lot of our friends are watching us from outside this country. They are eager to come to school in Canada. What do you have to tell them? Finally, finally. Yeah, finally, finally. This is gonna be a long one. So I just take <laughs> three minutes saying this. You know why you want to come here? Mm-hmm. You know why you want to come here? Because I've had, I've had situations where people gain admission, but have difficulties when it comes to applying for visa because they don't have a strong motivation or a purpose. Then, if you want to apply for a program, for instance, it has to connect. For instance, you did uh, a bachelor's in nursing, mm-hmm. and now you are coming here to do a master's in business management. It's the school might give you admission because you paid your application fee well and good, but you're going to have issues when it comes to applying for your visa. How does this connect? How do you prove that? How do you prove that you're a genuine student? Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you have flipped your your purpose. Yeah. Okay. There has to be a purpose. If It even starts from when you are applying for schools. You have to have maybe a statement of purpose, uh, a letter of intent. It it comes by different names, but generally a letter that states, oh, this is why I want to study this program. This is what I bring to the table. This is my past experience. 
just have a good reason why you are coming here because that's purpose. It's not just going to take you through the admission process, the uh, visa process, but it's mm. going to also help you when you come here. Mm. So you know why you are here yes. in the first place. Uh, another thing that I would like to say, like to wrap it up, it's start early. Yeah. Like for me... Start early, start early, start, start early, start early. early. Especially yes. for those of us who might still be in our undergrad program and trying to apply, I encourage you to keep at it because... That early preparation is going to help you a lot in terms of scouting for the right programs mm -hmm. because there's a lot of research involved. Mm -hmm. You have to research, 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 go through different school websites, check different programs, check the requirements, wow. start gathering your documents. So start early. It's going to help. Then and don't always call me to ask which school, <laughs> which school is admitting. I know I know that is part of your research. But yeah. at no, Patricia, no. I you, can't, you can't be spoon-fed because it starts from here. You can't because be spoon-fed. Yeah. Hit that. Yeah, you can't be spoon-fed because it starts from here. <laughs> the system here is very different from what we have back home. So very you don't good. come here and struggle. Because here, nobody's going to come on the board and write for you. Uh -huh. Nobody is going to come and read the textbook for you. You are going for to you to write notes. Yeah, yes, for you to write notes. You are going to have to direct yourself, own your your program, own mm -hmm. your journey. Very good. So you have to own it. Start from here. Do the research. Go to the schools. Check the programs. Check which aligns with what you're already doing or what you want to do. Yes. Have a good purpose. Start early and be patient. Be because patient. yeah, wow. be patient. Persevere because. I had to deal with my own set of rejections as well. Mm -hmm. I applied to some schools, paid application fee, and they never got back to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Right? But thankfully, the one that was for me still came to me. Came. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. I think if I want to also wrap it up, I don't know, but just be prayerful because God is the key. Amen. God is the master key. Amen. Because some sometimes I think about it, I didn't do anything special really. It yeah, just God. to get an admission <laughs> and then apply for a, a scholarship and get it on top of that, it doesn't yeah. come easy. It, it, it's, it's not easy. Yeah. And to think, I didn't even graduate with a first class. I graduated with a second class upper, which is still good. So if you have a two second class upper, I'm not saying it's not a good result because that's what I have. It's a good result. Mm -hmm. But to think, I didn't even graduate with a first class and I'm still doing well for myself. So what you graduate with in your, in your undergraduate or in your bachelor's does not define you. Uh, you can still do better and you can awesome. still reach your goals. Just awesome. be prayerful. God first, start early, be prepared. Amen. <laughs> yes, thank, you. Yeah. thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. This this is a pleasure. I'm going to share the link with my friends as well who are looking for this same yes, information. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. this is a very good uh, information. Nobody will call me again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Destiny. You're welcome. Thank you, thank thank you so you. much. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks. Thanks for watching. Thank you. <laughs> this is very good. This is very good information.